Welcome to this LLF session on the art of Shakirali. I will begin with a brief introduction and then we will talk to Mia Jazul Hassan about the subject. In 1952, a 36 year old artist with 15 years of rigorous training behind him joins the Mayo School of Art in Lahore. Over the next 20 years, Shakir Ali as an artist and teacher will lead the modern art movement in Pakistan. Born in Rampur, India in 1916, he joins the studio of the Ukeel brothers in Delhi in 1937. He moves to the JJ School of Art in Mumbai or Bombay as the city was known then in 1938, where he spends the next five years. Here he will study the murals of Ajanta, the Chola bronzes, Jain sculpture, and post-impressionist European painting. Interestingly, both M.F. Hussain and Francis Newton Sousa are at the same school at this time. At the end of the war, Shakirili goes to the Slate School in London. Three years later, he's off to Paris to work under André Lotte, a relatively well-known French cubist painter. Paris is followed by a year in Prague, where Shakir Ali studies textile design for almost a year, after which he returns to London and finally makes his way to Karachi with his Czech wife. Sadly, the Karachi he returns to is not very receptive to his art. Life is challenging, and the job of a drawing master at a government high school barely meets living expenses. In 1952, he moves to Lahore, and this is where our story begins. We are fortunate to have Mia Jazul Hassan with us this evening. Mia Saab does not need an introduction. He is one of Pakistan's leading artists, a highly respected teacher, and an encouraging and affectionate guide to many of us, including myself. He was also very close to Shakir Ali. Mia Saab, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, sir. Before we get deeper into our story, let us take a brief look at the painting that Shakir Ali is exposed to as a student, and also take a closer look at some of his own work. The Ukeel brothers, in whose studio Shakir Ali begins his formal training, paint in the soft and sentimental late Bengal style. When Shakir Ali moves to Mumbai, the modern art scene there is just beginning. Sponsorship of modern art in Mumbai in the 1940s is led by three European refugees, Rudolf van Leyden, a critic, Walter Langhammer, an artist, and Emanuel Schlesinger, an art, an art collector. They are on the prowl for local talent whose work they show and discuss in their homes. As important patrons of painters such as K.H. Ara and S.H. Raza, they help bring together the noted progressive group of artists in, Mum in Bombay known as the Bombay Progressives Group expanding the art scene beyond European and Indian society painters. These early paintings, which you see here by Raza, by Souza, and by Ara, are representative of modern art in Mumbai at the time. To go on a slight tangent, but an interesting one, I will quote from Francis Newton Souza's contribution to the manifesto of the progressive group, which happens a bit later, but still, uh, echoes the spirit of the time to put things in perspective. He says, Amrita Shergill hybrid, biologically as well as aesthetically. George Keat was also a hybrid, biologically and aesthetically. He derived from Picasso as Amrita Shergill derived from Goga. We dismiss them both as unsuitable examples for the promulgation of our ideas and art. Shanti Naketan was too sentimental and Jamini Roy too unsophisticated. We were bold and full of fire. We were forging a modern Indian art with a blast. Shakir leaves for the Slade in 1945, just after the war. The Slade School in London at this time is not exactly known for encouraging innovation and experiment. William Coldstream, at the as the principal of the Slade School in Shakir Ali's time when he's there, paints in this style. However, outside the school, the so-called London art group is doing the opposite, led by Francis Bacon and Lucien Freud. This group of artists is taking things forward. After a three years at the Slade, 
Shakir Ali then moves to Paris. In Paris, he, in, he works with André Lahot, who is a well-known Cubist artist at the time in France and counts the photographer Henri Hattier Bresson and the avant-garde painter Tamara de Lempica among his many students. As one can see, and we will see later, there are echoes of Lahot's late Cubism in some of Shakir's work itself. After the stint in Paris and a stint in Prague, Shakir returns to London and then makes his way to Pakistan. The Pakistan that Shakir arrives in is basically one where modern art has begun to happen even after 1947. Nia will have more to say about the history of the modernist movement in, in India. Zubayda Agha has dropped the bomb in 1948 at the exhibition. Zainul Abidin is working in East, in, in East Pakistan as it was then. Muhammad Kibriya is working with Zainul Abidin in the abstract mode. Ali Imam is working in Pakistan. I think he's based in Lawrence College, Goragali at that time, but he does meet the other artists. Anwar Jalal Shamza divides his time between Lahore and I guess London. And he is working in the modern, in the modern uh, idiom. Muin Najmi is also there. Now let us look at Shakir's paintings. This is the picture that he does in Prague. Now I will quote translations of Shakir Ali's when, I, when we take a closer look at his work which will put the work in context of what he thinks about art. Sadly, I haven't been able to do justice to Shakir Ali's restrained and elegant Urdu prose. Hopefully my obvious shortcomings as a translator will not have caused irreparable damage. He says, and I quote, an artist is a product of his time, but the seeds of his art lie in the past which following the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth appears in and as a specific style today. Anchored in the past, this style evolves over the intervening centuries. Why do I express myself in painting and not musical notes or verse? To answer this question, I need to delve deep into my psyche, to search for that passion that pushes me to paint to try to find out how and when it emerged. I wish I could explore the cycle of birth, death and rebirth in its complexity, to find out who I was centuries ago and what is the source of this light that guides me. If I could answer this question, I might be able to understand why I became a part of the cave painters of Altamira and not the dancing troupe of Natraj. In painting, the relationship between line and color is like the one between notes in a musical composition. Line and color are brought together by the artist to achieve a delicate combination of high and low notes, which we call images. So this is basically what he has to say about his work. And of course, he pays a great tribute to Cezanne when he says that Cezanne brought light to color, which is the greatest achievement in 20th century art. So basically, this is my brief introduction. And I will now turn to Miyasa to address some of the issues that we are going to raise today. Mia Saab, thank you so much for being with us. Let me begin by asking you something that I think is quite important to start our conversation. When Shakir Ali arrives in Lahore to take the job at the Mayo School, what are the main features of the modern art scene at that time? As I've said, some artists are already working in the modern style. What is it that Shakir Ali brings to the table? You are... <clears throat> Ari, you're doing so well. I, I suggest, why don't you continue? I will. Uh, however, since uh, you want to probe me, 
uh, I recall that uh, those times uh, very vividly, like anybody would uh, uh, recall the uh, earlier part of one's life. I was a student then at Asian and Mohin was my teacher. And through Mohin, I uh, uh, was met regularly uh, some of the uh, you call young painters, but uh, they were senior to me, like Shamza, Arimam, and uh, Rai Lakwa Javed, and there were many others uh, who took to literature, like uh, my friend, uh, 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 for a moment his name escapes me, <laughs> forgive my ears, and uh, uh, when Shakir arrived, uh, there, is a, there is a, I think, uh, uh, little too much emphasis on the fact that when Shakir arrives, uh, modernism takes off. I think uh, this is not entirely uh, correct because uh, uh, if you allow me a minute or two, uh, Lahore was a very vibrant uh, center of painting and this has not been very well explained and there are very few people uh, who have written about it. For instance, if you'll allow me to go back, uh, <clears throat> as uh, Shakar Ali himself mentioned that you have to go back and then come forward and assimilate all that has been there. Okay, in 1920, there was a big exhibition of Indian painting in Wembley. There, the painting from Lahore were separated from the Indian art and uh, exhibited as painting from the Punjab. Mm -hmm. This was at the Wembley in 1920. And for the next, next 20 years, not 10, 20 years, there was an, an regular annual exhibition for the next 20 years at Lahore. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very vibrant period because uh, 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 they were talking about painting had become very popular because of that and it has been internationally acknowledged. And it was being discussed on the radio. It was being discussed in all the intellectual uh, circles. And, uh, 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 and you notice that is why uh, there are several essays on uh, what should be the direction of uh, uh, our painting. Chutai has even attempted that. There are others who have not agreed with him. But there was a debate and discussion which was going on. And then at that period of time, this is before creation of Pakistan, uh, there were people like Satish Gujral who later, you know, uh, uh, then later he uh, basically then uh, uh, emphasized uh, on uh, on sculpture more recently. Uh, what I thought he was a very fine painter. Then there was Sanyal, and then for uh, Amrita Sher Gill, which has been so rudely dismissed uh, uh, by not only uh, because uh, her style of painting uh, was not modern enough for uh, this painter from whom I re respect as a painter greatly, but to take exception to who his father or mother was, I think not only rude, but very crass. I uh, think I agreed with what Susa said. I just reported what he said. <laughs> uh, uh, no, 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 I'm not saying ke bhai, ke, achha. So I think that she had made a great impression for the first time she had sat close to common people, which had not been done before. They have been seen from a distance, you know. And uh, uh, so when, when what actually, there is a momentum in Lahore and people are impatient, young people want to move ahead and they are experimenting in all different ways. All the people I've mentioned, they have worked differently. And uh, what, uh, as uh, Sabdameer, I think, uh, uh, says, uh, puts it rather well. He says, the presence of Shakar Ali ensured them 
that they were on the right path. And okay. what is what what happens after that is you don't see uh, that anybody is imitating Chakravarti or mm -hmm. imitating is borrowing from it. But they're encouraged to go to in their own way, and that is why that is what gives uh, modernism an impetus in Lahore. That is Shaka's presence is, I think, the most important, uh, was a most important factor impelling uh, modernism uh, ahead, telling people you do what you like, you yeah. conceive and, you know, and uh, roll things into your mind and your consciousness and use whatever color to express it and don't worry what other people say about it. You know? and, ev and evidently, I mean, what you say is absolutely right. And, and for a man of such few words, because he was not really a very talkative person, he did make a huge impact on those around him. Miyasa, in the early 1950s, in Lahore, there is this elephant in the room in any discussion on art. That is Abdul Rahman Chukhtai. Chukhtai is still trying to take Mughal painting forward. And he's passionate in his opposition to both modernism and Western art. Something that had a progressive tinge before, during the, the colonial period. And these modalities of expression, i.e. modernism and everything associated with it, fly in the face of the aesthetic that Chukhtai almost religiously is fixated on. How does Shakir deal with the Chukhtai position? Interestingly, the obituary that Shakir Ali publishes on Chukhtai's death is about 10 lines long. It says that he was influenced by the Bengal school, which is correct. Uses Japanese wash technique, which is absolutely correct. Painted in the tradition of the Mughal artists, again, correct. And will always be a national asset, right again. But there is nothing else in there. His essay, Shakir's essay on Behzad is much longer. It's a written, it's written as a letter. So Chukhtai's obituary shows that Shakir really had a relatively uneasy relationship with him and his art. Any comments on that one? Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, as you said, Adhraman Chukhtai was even larger than an elephant. And because he resided almost every state museum of South Asia. And uh, you can't just, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, put him aside. And uh, there are three things which are, which are, uh, uh, which are, which are uh, not right. Which are not uh, right, it looks right, it's not wrong or right, which are, uh, not true to his practice. Number one, there is not an iota of a relationship with what Chuktai is doing and what was done in the shadows of Bengal school. Not at all. Okay. You know, you look at Chuktai, you see light, you see, you know, the, the life uh, uh, emerging and forging forth. When you look at a, a Bengal school painting, it looks that it has been uh, uh, really uh, uh, advocated by by the British to to, <laughs> to to tell people to go to sleep. So, yes. so there is no comparison between the two because and number two, K, we should not take uh, Chuktai's views uh, so lightly because uh, I don't think so. Anybody has written about art so much. As and I think very few people have read him through. He opposed aping other cultures. He didn't say not borrowing from others. Not, if he uh, thought, ke, if he was saying he should not borrowing, you should not borrow and learn from other cultures, why would he go to London and learn from Beardsley and buy something from there? Why would he learn the technique? They say, can he, they, there were some people were interested in, in, uh, insisting that we should only work with watercolor and not oil. Oil is a foreign medium. This is absurd. So was etching. So the, the lot of this narrative is totally rubbish. I think this, these things have to be put 
put right in their correct perspective. Chuktai was an intellectual and a very concerned, all-embracing person. And what he was saying, number one, which I say to this day, I say to my students who I no longer teach as such, but I like to be in contact with young uh, artists. I draw a lot of inspiration from them. Ke, <clears throat> ke wherever you go, I, you, I say ke bhai, the painter is a marauder. He's, a, he's not a thief, he's a marauder. Wherever you see something good, pick it up and put it in your pocket and, and use it. And if you need it, use it. Don't put in your pocket anything which is uninteresting and just because somebody says uh, uh, it is good. So, Chuktai was saying, Ke don't ape the West. Mm -hmm. And I say that even today. Ke why are you painting modern painting and which, which are not even put up for display in Pakistan? You committed to sell it to a gallery in, uh, uh, in Norway or in uh, London or somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, I wanted to buy to, in order to encourage two, three painters in, in, in a show. And they sent me very sheepishly a message, okay, sir, they are committed to the gallery and it is their first choice. You know, now this is also happening and this should be highlighted. Okay? Who are you painting for? From where are you? Naturally, uh, Velasquez is one of my favorite painters, but yes. he painted what the king told him to paint. Absolutely. You know, and he painted beautifully. And most of the Renaissance painter uh, art was, well, there was a freedom because there were the Medici's who were enlightened, but Pope told him how his portrait should be painted. Yes. How should uh, uh, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapter, you know, what should be the subject of the uh, ceiling of the Sistine Chapter? So what I mean, I mean, uh, mean to say is that uh, uh, you should, uh, painting is about expressing your, uh, is yourself, yourself, your ideals, your pains and tribulations, your uh, unanswered uh, queries into the future, into yourself. And it's a complicated business. I think painting is not good for people. They shouldn't paint. It is, uh, uh, and if they want to paint, then they should suffer. Be ready to suffer. And, yeah, but uh, the relationship between Shakir Saab and Tukhtai's work is not exactly a very easy one, is it? No, I, 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 I agree. And uh, uh, that is why uh, uh, instead, instead of getting into competition with others, uh, you yeah. write your own good poetry, rather huh? finding fault with the, the uh, uh, language of uh, uh, somebody who is, uh, um, you know, uh, miles away from you. They mm -hmm. didn't go uh, together very well. They respected each other. And in fact, the last comment was when Chuktai died and Chakir was uh, unwell. Uh, not when well, he was getting old. He said, Yar, main jab mar gaya, to wo Chuktai, ke ye sala bhi mere <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was the relationship. <laughs> uh, so, Let's... This is what Shagat told me. <laughs> so... <laughs> right. So, of course, there is respect and there is, you know, disagreement, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Now, when Shakir Ali is in Europe, Western painting is fairly advanced in terms of, it, of its exploration of primitive symbols, which are non-Western. Now, in referencing his art in terms of primitive symbols, symbols is Shakirili being modern in the European sense, or is he doing something different? Could you comment on the use of symbolism, uh, or primitive symbolism in Shakirili's painting? You see, when my own reaction, uh, <clears throat> throughout the years I met uh, Shakir, you know, I know that you mentioned it, I, I never regarded his painting as a uh, uh, Western, mm -hmm. honest to God, really? I, I always, uh, I mean, they smelt uh, uh, of nativity, you know, being native, the colors were, uh, they were, were used as, uh, you know, 
uh, you would use saffron or you know is 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 lime is subjects uh, birds and uh, uh, and uh, i think uh, uh, he painted uh, uh, women mm -hmm. uh, i think in 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 our, in our painting we like paint, painting women whether it was radha or whether it was you know uh, somebody you know there were always a presence of women without the presence of women there was equally equality of gender you seen in the painting so <laughs> so uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, you don't gaze at them as a, something to be like a sandwich to be eaten like most of the european women uh, painting they look at women but uh, in a from a different angle at least in shake you don't see you know, she is a symbol of repression she of exploitation and of struggle and uh, and i would say even of uh, chastity and uh, she is obviously stronger than the bull you know and uh, uh, in this this conflict he he is always uh, with the with the with the lead with the leader and uh, 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 and i uh, uh, you know uh, i i have always thought go why didn't uh, zeus zeus wife kya naam hai bol raha hu uska he didn't take up huh? era era ha huh? era why didn't she take up the sort of cudgels with the uh, leda or well, leda obviously would have excuses but she there's, there's no mention of uh, leda uh, taking on a lascivious husband <laughs> well i mean if the lascivious husband to be the king of all the gods there is a problem in taking issue with him but anyway <laughs> that may be so yeah i mean there is so symbolism in shakir's work according to you is it's also not so, so it's not so explicit not it's so. not so i mean if you see the uh, 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 his the, the birds in flight which he contributed to the prague museum yeah you know uh, and for the symbol of freedom they are sort of uh, flying from uh, i think the left hand corner towards yeah. the bit above right hand corner into the blue sky i mean you don't think it's a symbol you really fly with them they they they, they you feel free you feel that as though you are also flapping your wings in 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 in, in air and so they are not uh, sort of a symbol equal to that meaning kind of it it is striking a situation which you makes you think in a certain way it is not uh, uh, deliberately created symbols and obviously there are there's a, there are a few images of women together with caged birds mm -hmm. there, there and the figures are i find the figures to be i spartan is not the right word to use but very very basic and very essential they are just mm -hmm. simple lines that are put together to throw the sentiment of or the mood in relief rather than the person the physicality mm -hmm. of the person herself now no. mm. this is what my perception is i i may be completely yes, absolutely there yeah. is no feeling of flesh you there don't no to reach out and feel it like uh, you send me that uh, photograph of uh, bernini's uh, sculpture yes, where uh, you know <laughs> you can describe it yourself <laughs> anyway uh, the indication in the flesh and stone yes of course uh, ah yeah. that kind of sensuous feeling yeah, that's not missing. there anymore it's pretty pretty basic stuff and it's essential now you know it's very interesting that when shakil is in lahore lahore is buzzing with debate and discussion i mean there's the park tea house and the coffee house crowd and there is saftarvi there's nasir kazmi there's intezar hussain saab and there is shakir ali who is a very quiet person and there is this debate raging between art for art sake and art with the political purpose and this is not just in pakistan it's raging everywhere now where does shakir position himself in this divide for example if one reads his prose and it is well written in my view 
he, in, in an essay, when he talks about Soviet art, he is full of praise for art in the Soviet Union. And he almost says that this is a place where an artist should be because they can do whatever they want, which was not strictly speaking true in the 40s when he wrote the essay. And, but then a lot of his work is obsessed with this trans historical collective consciousness, which takes specific forms through the centuries. So where does Shakir come down between the sort of East Heats, for example, and the politically driven artists, poets, painters, and writers in the debates in Lahore at that time. Did he have I a think, uh, I think uh, uh, Shakir, uh, if you read uh, his short stories, mm -hmm. some of them are very left wing. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, yeah. These two, three of them yeah. are very, uh, look like they have written in company of, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, some of our very left-wing uh, short story writers. Uh, but I would say uh, he was not an activist. He never got involved in... Uh, it is not just... Uh, uh, you can't paint a, a radical picture unless you have uh, seen red, so to say. I'm just punning on radical and red. <laughs> you know, unless you... I mean, uh, you can't paint a juicy... You can paint an apple, but if you want to paint a juicy apple, you must at least... Have, should have eaten to try to eat one, you know. I don't think so. Kabe, he went on to the street, of, uh, you know, flying a revolutionary, singing and and you know dancing in support of the working classes. But he was his uh, feelings were always for uh, the common people, which is evident that uh, in uh, his paintings, his he is. Uh, 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 a painting, common people, fruit sellers. There are a lot of uh, paintings of this kind, Tongewala, and you know, yeah. and he doesn't seek uh, an uh, elitist subject to be uh, painted. But as such, he did not. Uh, and uh, his very close friend was Khalid Iqbal. Now, originally, Khalid Iqbal also confessed that he painted a portrait. On asking, he painted a portrait of Lenin. <laughs> but one can't even believe that he had anything to do with politics. And you'd say, Give me politics. Art ka kya? Ka. Literature ka ho sakta hai ke nare baazi kuch beech mein. But painting mein, what can you... So I, my position on that is that uh, ke you can only... Uh, you can't be more than what you are, really. You can't. And... Uh, 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 you have to sniff a rose in order to describe it. You know, otherwise you will only be talking about its color and form and not its 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 core uh, character. And of course, the color and form is important. And I think uh, Shakir was dealing with color and form and texture and uh, uh, not uh, the... For example, I have one of his paintings in, of a beggar woman, probably earlier one, a big hand stretching out big hand because workers do have a big hand i don't want to, i don't think the rich ever notice that their right hand is very big from the left because they work and it becomes bigger and and a child sort of you know and she's stretching back the abstract so yeah. he had this but then his other than he finally i think uh, he uses of course uh, greek mythology in the larger mythology, and uh, and I uh, say, complained to him. Yes, I said you should have also used some uh, mythology, some stories with which uh, you know uh, people are more familiar. There are a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, mythology. South Asia is full of it, but uh, obviously he did so much work. You couldn't do more, I suppose. Achha, talk, getting back to Soviet Union, I think if I was to take vote in Pakistan, most painters would have even liked to go to Soviet Union in 1940s. They'll get a job, they'll get something to eat, and not rot in their bloody dirty studios trying to sell one painting and somebody else negotiating with them. No, I'll not give you 100, I'll give you 45, you know. That kind, and if today the painters painting for a, 
for a gallery is not very edifying reducing it to a to a commodity rather than so at least uh, if uh, they they are somebody to paint uh, a worker everybody painted a worker in their own way and what's wrong with that i mean if it is all right painting uh, a, a king of uh, spain by uh, velasquez so what is wrong if uh, uh, the soviet uh, union asks to do people to paint uh, or make sculpture of lenin or stalin or mao but that it becomes terribly wrong i don't know why that becomes terribly wrong and I, it is all right you know if you pu 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 publish big pictures of yourself in the news on time magazine covers and you know all the media is full of images and that's all right no no that's fine that's absolutely fine. but i guess his response if you'd ask to you about why not use your uh, subcontinental mythological symbol and why do leader and the swan i mean i'm sure he would have i'm not that i'm sure i i think he would have said well you know it's all about the same thing isn't it what's the difference between natraj and dionysus I mean, it's it's all the same thing and so i guess whether you explore one or the other in his own way it doesn't matter it doesn't yeah, i agree i agree but at the same time you know he with gerard uh, he spent one year in uh, uh, learning uh, fresco and then spending a lot of time with him uh, investigating the caves of ajanta yes and yes. Uh, and therefore why well, I, i i you know you find ajanta's uh, uh, effects in his surfaces of his work and you know even his uh, edges of his contours of this there is a Uh, I find the uh, influence of his study of, uh, 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 incidentally, this is as an aside. I uh, he uh, uh, pre presented me the first folio of the Janta caves drawings of each uh, cave that he had done. No, no, not him. No, not which him. Which was first published. Okay, they were okay. hand drawn by the students of most of them from uh, Bombay, yeah. and uh, they were published obviously. And he had it, so that is a, a okay. very prized possession of mine. When you are in law, I I will definitely come and see it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, the thing is that you know not what you have written, but the other things that have been written about Shakir Ali. in pakistan to my mind a lot is made about this western stuff of course i mean art is one you as you said you absorb influences from here and there people talk much more about the influence of rilke's eternal recurrence the influence of greek mythology the influence of cubism and all that and somewhere in that discussion jacket anchor into the, the the indian side the subcontinental side of his self which he keeps on talking about is lost so i find that a little uncomfortable myself but i am not the one deciding who should write what but incidentally you uh, also read uh, 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 the greek plays of yes. europity and all and uh, yes. again uh, i am the beneficiary of a present from him of beautiful volumes of all the three major playwrights so he was a, he, he had lot of very interesting books uh, which uh, he liked to read his observations uh, wherever he went for on a tour he had a copy and he make observations make drawings of tumblers and things i think they found their way uh, transformed in some of his still lives and he they say that he was he used to sit in the coffee house when he was there and would even doodle on the white bit of the cigarette packet <laughs> so, uh, uh, or uh, little things so yeah he was taught he talked so little so i suppose <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. ji sorry yes, i mean just to 
towards the end of our discussion, you know, as a teacher, mentor, and guide, Shakir Ali's role is hugely significant. A lot of, as you said, that it was the person who got together a whole load of people, gave them the confidence and the support to do. And of course, in this case, being the principal in the last 10 years of his tenure there at the NCA must have been hugely, hugely helpful. Any comments on Shakir Ali's legacy? Hey, Shakir Ali, uh, I think uh, uh, collected uh, Oh, meeting. So sorry, sir. Is, uh, There's something going wrong, but I will fix it in a second. Uh, okay. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. There we are. Uh, what was we saying again? I, Shakir, I, Shakir, I, I, legacy. Shakir, Shak, You see, number one, Shakir, when he uh, as a principal of the National College of Arts, he collected. Uh, 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 people, the best people he could lay hands on. For example, Khalid Iqbal, he was the head of Department of Painting there, outstanding painter, and it was very gold. Uh, 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 he was also studied at the Slate, and uh, 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 and uh, he really uh, strengthened the foundations of painting at National College, which which you know, and then of one people he turned up in Government College. I had just returned from Cambridge and I was studying, teaching. Uh, I taught there for a year of two terms, I think, uh, uh, English literature. So uh, she came and he came and he said, Ijaz, what are you doing here? Why don't you come to the National College of Arts? And I said, what will I do? You'll have all the time to paint and you set up a department of academics for us. I wanted for it. And by then, by then, uh, I, uh, you know, I had started again, my fingers were trying to hold the brush and for two, three years, I didn't paint. I, from here, I had gone, to, after doing my master's, I had gone to uh, St. Martin School. I, I couldn't do, do that. So I said, let's go and read literature again at Cambridge. So I was stuck, you know, and he took me there. And, uh, and I think the, uh, the, uh, in two, three years time, each painter was able to identify from the painting, okay, this is Goya, this is Chuktai, this is uh, Neo Bengal movement, and this is Rang Brown. You know, this is very important for a painter that if you paint, can't say okay, this is not Mane and this is Mone, so what kind of a painter is he? Similarly, I, I, I think from just looking at the verse, I'm sure, Ali, you can say that this is Khaled and this is not me, Taki me. This is very important so. for an artist. <laughs> but, you know, so then Khaled ko bhi liya, Colin David was a very good, one of the best draftsmen I tell you in this country has produced. And uh, and similarly, uh, Kamal Khan Mamtaz was summoned from, he was in Ghana. I persuaded him. He said, why don't you get him? He was my class fellow. Uh, in school and so he left his job and came and became the head of the department of architecture, uh, architecture. and yeah. architecture which was a three-year course people who were doing three years course are not fully qualified architects he had the department elevated and affiliated with the london uh, institute of architects this is how this is this was entirely his own personal effort that the people came because of him and uh, he was a very kind uh, teacher. And, uh, uh, and like Mohin Ajmi, uh, Mohin Ajmi's art criticism was if you showed him a painting and he would look at it left, right, and he said, Yaar baat nahi koi bani. Ya deke kata tha, Yaar lagta hai baat ban hai. This is almost uh, uh, Shakir Ali. Also, wouldn't even mumble these words. He would sort of say, okay, you, know, look at you, you knew okay, he has approved it and he walked away. And uh, he was very kind to students. Everybody, 
uh, he didn't think that being a principal he should rob his children. I don't think I ever saw that he was shouted at a at a staff member or even a a, a worker in in in, in the and uh, and we at that time we had all department going with department of sculpture, we had department of textiles of uh, uh, of ceramics of architecture and uh, uh, so on and so forth. I think okay, you, you couldn't have a better principle than that. Nay, also you've got people, artists like Ahmed Parvez, like Zahur al Akhlaq, like Jamil Naqsh. They were all encouraged by this man. Yes, so that, that all of them, all of them, you see, uh, uh, you felt encouraged by his presence, you know, in the uh, 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 and he, 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 he did that. He, he would make his intentions known uh, very politely to, to artists. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, Khalid Iqbal's his work was totally very different. Total, uh, people, uh, most people don't know how to look at Khalid Iqbal. Khalid Iqbal as a landscape painter is absolutely out of the world. People say landscape is outdated. How can nature be outdated? Well, I mean, painting is not outdated. So how can landscape be outdated? You know, how can you know in the sense to his way of looking at it is, is very different from people who have addressed nature and things and uh, even still lives is remarkable still lives. He was my teacher at school and then my uh, teacher at the university, then my colleague at National College of Art. And these were people who, who spent their lives, like Shaka, uh, tried to uh, marry once or twice, but... Uh, uh, Unfortunately, uh, that part of Shaka Ali's life didn't work out very well, but then no one's no. perfect. But Shaka Ali, uh, <laughs> so he said, yeah, this is, woman's face is very familiar. And uh, this was in Karachi, in early, and then somebody reminded it, yeah, this, this is your former wife. <laughs> you know, I may not imagine that one can be so lost, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, we've all learned a lot today, and as usual, I'm going to share my screen to stay with me for just a second. And uh, then we can conclude our, uh, our, our work here. And uh, let's see. Okay. I've lost, um, the, I've lost you again. Okay. No, you haven't the, lost You lost me. Huh, no. I have uh, now the, uh, the black sun. The black sun. Okay, fine. So, Miyasab, thank you very much for your time. And you know your guidance. Whenever I have a problem with aesthetic issues, you know I always call you, and you are kind enough to respond to me, and you know deal with my somewhat impertinent behavior, for which no. I uh, I am very <laughs> sorry. But anyway, I will end this first by thanking you, and then by quoting something from Muhammad Hassan Askari who wrote two stunning essays on Shakir Ali. Yes, right. was a great literary critic, wrote in French and English, but most of the gross work he did was in Urdu in Pakistan. And he was rather stingy. I mean, I met him once or twice. He was rather stingy with praise. But anyway, he says, the lines move sometimes together and sometimes against each other. They correspond and they clash. The variation in color is constrained by the line. The subject matter is straightforward, but this dynamic of the line gives the image its complexity, its unity, its strength, its song. In executing a still life, Shakir Ali does a lot more. He creates a universe of unity and opposition. Shakir Ali's studio is for me a place sacred and blessed. And lastly, I would like to leave our audience with this wonderful photograph, the iconography of which is, to my mind, hugely instructive. 
Ustad Allah Baksh. This is taken in a boat in what was then East Pakistan is now Bangladesh. Ustad Allah Baksh sits as if blessing Shakir Ali with his hand on his shoulder and the other hand on Zainul Abideen and seems to be saying, well, our time has come, is coming to an end. The world is yours now. Niyasab, thank you very much. And our audiences, thank you very much to all of you for being with us. Inshallah, we shall meet again. All the best.